Maybe I'm channeling George R. R. Martin more than I expected. <laughs> Just all the death. Gardener versus Architects breaking out of a castle. I'm so excited. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be trying to write like George R. R. Martin. Now, jokes could be made about the speed with which his most popular book series, A Song of Ice and Fire, is progressing, but I will not be making them. Especially because when you take into account the full body of work that George R. R. Martin has created, produced, it's kind of phenomenal. Not just in the novel world, but also in the TV writing world, even separate from Game of Thrones. However, I do think it's important to discuss his self-proclaimed issues with deadlines, but we'll do that later in this video. I'm also especially interested in his routine because I just started listening to the first book, A Game of Thrones, on audiobook as a way to kind of not be so scared of the high-ish fantasy genre. So what is George R. R. Martin's writing routine anyways? As best as I could find, George wakes up in the morning, gets his coffee, and starts his writing day. Now the full quote actually reads, On good days I look up and it's dark outside and the whole day has gone by and I don't know where it's gone. But there's bad days too, where I struggle and sweat and a half hour creeps by and I've written three words. And half a day creeps by and I've written a sentence and a half and then I quit for the day and play computer games. You know, sometimes you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you. From a Bustle article. And this is interesting to me because it's like ever so slightly different than the advice that George gives on his FAQs on his website. Which is to say, write. Write every day even if it's only a page or two. To be fair, that's his advice for beginning writers, but I'm just gonna kind of go with it. What was this movement? Who knows? From that same FAQ though, it's clear that he's a fan of the write a lot, read a lot method, and he's a big fan of reading broadly, especially outside of the genre that you're writing. Finally, uh, good old George is not on social media, which means I will not be on social media tomorrow because I switched things up a little bit and actually today was the first day that I tried writing like George R.R. R. Martin and I violated that rule. I didn't follow it. I knew I wasn't gonna follow it, uh, but I just didn't follow it. So day two tomorrow I will be completely off of social media, which means no Instagram scrolling and especially no Reddit spiraling. What a freaking time suck. It's a very entertaining time suck, but I recognize it's a time suck, so maybe this is gonna be good for me. <laughs> to summarize quickly, I am going to wake up pretty early-ish, aka like my normal time, around 6, 6.30. I'm gonna go get my coffee and then I'm going to immediately start writing. I'm also gonna be attempting to get at least one page, but if it's just not happening, it's gonna be okay. This is a big thing for me because as someone who usually tracks my progress and makes kind of a big deal about how much I'm progressing, I think this might be a healthier way to look at things. So we're just gonna see. I'm also going to make sure to read a chapter of a book, probably a Game of Thrones. And again, stay off social media. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then during the day, amongst other things, we're gonna discuss this whole gardener versus architect thing that George is so famous for. So I guess I will just see y'all tomorrow morning. I had to break out my Hades mug. <laughs> we dance, we kiss, we schmooze, we carry on, we go home happy. What do you say? Mm. What a great villain. Much like a lot of George R. R. Martin's characters. <laughs> See, I tried to tie it in. It is now 6.34 a.m. and... I'm still planning to work in Project Death. I'm actually trying to get it up to a point where they have to kind of close part of the castle down because there has been another death in Project Death. Maybe I'm channeling George R. R. Martin more than I expected. <laughs> Just all the death. Anyways, that's my goal for the day. When I tried to do this yesterday, and when I was still posting on social media, I did say that I only managed to get 150 words. So hopefully today's better. I'll talk about that later, but hopefully today's better. In the George R. R. Martin spirit, I did not let it get me down, but if it happens today, I'm gonna be bad. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, really, no, it's fine. Well, I'm already doing better than yesterday. And that was only a single five minute sprint. I did realize though that I think I'm gonna try and set my phone on the Forest app just for as long as it'll possibly go because I noticed yesterday, except that I was allowing myself to do it, but even in the middle of stuff when I was stuck, I would, I don't think I let myself stay in this stuck mindset for very long. 
before I started reaching for my phone or trying to go on YouTube or whatever. So I'm gonna try and do this as a means of somewhat locking myself out. How long will you go for? All right, a full two hours. Let's, let's do it. Dang, okay. No one really needs to talk with me before 9 a.m. anyway, so it's fine. Hmm. I have actually now finished my coffee. <laughs> it has been about an hour since I started writing and I currently have 942 words. I did notice that several times I actually typed in YouTube or Buzzfeed or any number of other websites. It's bad, it's bad. I don't know that the no social media rule should go over into no internet usage in general, but I think the way that I'm using the internet in these instances is very akin to social media, kind of like this endless scrolling and trying to get away from the discomfort of not knowing what to write. And also, you know, George does most of his research still by reading books. I'm sure he uses the internet, but he reads a lot of books for his research and so I feel like I'm violating the rule if I do pull up something like that, so I've been trying not to do it, but the temptation has been there enough that I've actually typed it in and it's only after that I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Mm, mm. I think this is gonna be a takeaway. Just like when I tried to copy Stephen King's routine that consisted of no distractions, I had, Mm -hmm. I think I know what I'm gonna do. Anyways, okay. I did actually wanna take this time to talk about ways that George and I are similar and finally discuss this whole architect versus gardener thing. I am going to use the internet right now, but it's because I already had a link to it. So I'm gonna X out of it immediately after, but I wanna show you the quote. <laughs> I think there are two types of writers, the architects and the gardeners. The architects plan everything ahead of time, like an architect building a house. They know how many rooms are going to be in the house, what kind of roof they're going to have, where the wires are going to run, what kind of plumbing there's going to be. They have the whole thing designed and blueprinted out before they even nail the first board up. The gardeners dig a hole, drop in a seed, and water it. They kind of know what the seed is. They know if they planted a fantasy seed or a mystery seed or whatever, but as the plant comes up and they water it, they don't know how many branches it's going to have. They find out as it grows. And I'm much more of a gardener than an architect. Let's see, I'm gonna X out of it immediately. Bam. Now, I perhaps incorrectly, depending on who you talk to, call my first draft a zero draft because it's a crap draft, it's a discovery draft. It is all these things where I am learning about the story and the characters as I write because I don't even know what story I'm trying to tell. If that ain't a gardener, I don't know what is. And I think this whole plotters versus pantsers, architects versus gardeners debate is just going to be a never ending one. But I actually do really like the way George R. R. Martin talks about it rather than the way the plotter versus pantser thing talks about it, I guess. Apparently George has gotten some flack because of course, where are the next books in the Assault of Ice and Fire series and is the reason it's taking him so long to write them or for them to be published because he's a gardener and not an architect. If he were an architect, would he have this all kind of figured out? There's no right way to write. There's no right way to write. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. There's no single way. And through all of my I tried writing like experiments, that is the one constant thing. There is no single way to write. But the question remains, is George R. R. Martin's gardening the reason why he has missed deadlines he's set? Well, cause I don't know anything about the publisher's point of view on this, but deadlines he's set, deadlines he's stated to fans on and on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a lot of people use J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series as a rebuttal to the fact that one, she's, you know, clearly an architect and also she was able to like get an ever increasing world published and out. Different writers have different styles. Different writers have different processes. On and on it goes. George R. R. Martin is not J.K. Rowling and J.K. Rowling is not George R. R. Martin. I'm sure this is a great shot to you all. <laughs> but I think there are plenty of authors who fall under the kind of gardener mentality or authors who are pantsers and are still able to put out their books at a given time. So what's up, George, with the missing deadlines? <laughs> and he's been quoted as saying that he has too much optimism. Some people have theorized that it's because he works so much or so closely on the TV show. Some people said even that he wanted the TV shows to be done before he published the next book as to not like get the two confused or... I don't know. I am someone who completely understands thinking that a deadline will work and then realizing throughout the creative process, throughout the creative journey, as I garden, that I was wrong, that I was wrong, that there was still work that needed to be done, sometimes a lot of work. So I like to think of George as more of 
perhaps a cautionary tale in regards to deadlines, but I personally don't think there's anything wrong with the gardening method or the pantsing method because again, tons of people are able to actually produce books from it on a normal deadline schedule. <laughs> but please do comment down below. This is one I'm especially curious on. Why do you think the next book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series hasn't been published yet? Do you have an estimate, I guess, when you think it will be published? And do you think it is potentially part of the gardening that is the problem? I would be very curious. That being said, probably time for me to get back to work. I did it. I'm now at 1,338 words. I'm really excited with my progress though because I completed one scene. I had a shorter scene and now I've just started a new scene. And this is all leading up to this breaking out of a castle scene. And I'm so excited. So we've had the other death happen already and now we need to break out. So it's kind of like a prison break, only it's a castle break. And the thing is though that I need to manage it so that they can break out of the castle for a little bit and still manage to sneak back into the castle without anyone knowing. So I think that's going to take a little bit more kind of planning as I go along. <laughs> but I am about to go for my gym time and during that I am going to listen to slash do my reading for the day in A Game of Thrones. I don't think George R. R. Martin would care too much how I'm doing it but I am going to get at least an hour in so yeah I'm excited. Okay one sec. <laughs> After working out, I am going to stop by the library and pick up my physical copy of A Game of Thrones. But then my plan is to come back here. And I think even though George does sometimes work on multiple projects at a given time, I'm actually going to continue working on Project Death because I am trying to hit a personal deadline of being done with this first draft by the end of December. Yeah. All right, let's go. Woo! I should save this first. File. Save. I'm starting track three now. Daenerys. The girl scrubbed her back and her feet and told her how lucky she was. Drogo is so rich that he... How can I do that if his mother steals him? Time to go get the hardback version. Oh my god, this book is so big. Ooh, what a pretty map though. Okay, how many pages is this? If you count the appendix, 694 pages. My goodness. Great, I think I'm on page like 37. <laughs> It now makes complete sense why this thing is nearly 34 hours. <laughs> I have 32 hours and 8 minutes and 31 seconds remaining. Well, I guess all that's left is to listen. The king said, but too late. Squashed in face. And now it's time to write again. This is the curse of the blank page. I'm also at 1,583 words. That is well over the one page, you know, kind of minimum I set. I had basically just been going off of momentum because I figured when George had that momentum, he really likes to just run with it. He talks about when he gets the characters sort of whispering in his head and it seems like everything just kind of comes out at once. So I was going with that. Now I've been sitting here for a while staring at this blank page because I'm realizing that I have to figure out the practicalities of how they're gonna break out. So I've done all the legwork to get to the exact point and now how do you smuggle someone out of a castle then back into a castle that's on lockdown because someone else has died. <sighs> Why do I do this to myself? I should have noted the struggle started about five minutes ago so we'll see how long I struggle here before I decide that it's been enough. And for the record, if you take 1,583 words for the day, even single spaced at Times New Roman 12, it's just about three pages. So I was thinking back to the map that was in this book, right? And for the love of story made me a map off of Project Death after the failure that was my personal attempt at it. This one is so nice, by the way. Oh my gosh. So now I've actually been using it to kind of visualize how I would sneak them out. And I have made some plotting notes. It is now 1157. And I think I'm just gonna call it for the day on this. 
I think that's it. I think I've done justice to George R. R. Martin's <laughs> routine or at least his advice. And now I want to talk about what I've learned and what I'm going to take away from this moving forward. Oh god this map is beautiful. Okay so there are a couple of lessons I think I've learned. One certainly sitting in this sort of discomfort of not being able to figure out my story is good. I don't know that it's good for all day or anything. I don't know that I could do what George does which is only having a sentence or two at the end of the day and that's just being what it is. But I do like the idea of not immediately turning to the internet or my phone or even email. I'm just not turning to distraction when that is happening, especially in the first two hours that I'm working. So I think my new goal going forward, because I often work on my novels first thing, is just for those first two hours, I'm not going to touch my phone. And again, because I'm working on my novels usually at that time, I don't need my internet like I tend to need it for other work. So it's always something that I can, if I need to do some research later, I can just put it off a little bit later. Yeah. 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 And then one of the other things I'm taking away is just this idea of perseverance because of course George R. R. Martin's career with writing started decades ago. I'm going to quote this article but I will put it up on the screen. In 1971 a young writer graduated with his master's degree in journalism from Northwestern University. He spent the first 13 years of his career writing professionally and made a living from it but without major success. In 1983 he released his fourth book The Armageddon Rag. Nobody read it. The book was a total flop. In the author's own words it essentially destroyed my career as a novelist at the time. But he was determined and so he found ways to keep writing. He landed a job writing a television script for CBS. Soon after the show was canceled he managed to work his way onto another TV series, this time ABC, but it was cancelled again. In 1991, after nearly a decade of bouncing around, he decided to start writing fiction again. I do appreciate the ending of this, which is two million words later, George R. R. Martin was famous. So as someone who does a lot of different sort of writing, it's always nice to hear someone that we see as a huge success now not always having that success. And I think it's something that goes into a lot of creative fields where there's this idea of an overnight success without seeing all of the work that's being put into it. And I think writing books is that way just generally. You know the end product is this book, right? You can see the number of pages. It's gonna take you 33, 34 hours to read on audiobook. <laughs> like it's gonna take a while and that's no small feat. But the years that went into this, the number of hours of work that we do in order to create a single story is incredible. And I think just the continuous pushing through whether it's for an individual book or it's just over an entire career and not giving up. Yeah I think I'm just going to keep that story in mind especially as my brain's all taken up with the end of 2019 in the beginning of 2020. But I think that is going to be it for me. Over the course of the two days I tried writing like George R. R. Martin I wrote just under 2,000 words in Project Death. And you know what? That's not shabby. It's really not. I'm constantly trying to reprogram my brain so again I'm gonna take George R. R. Martin's spirit in this and that I did my best for as long as I thought I could without going crazy <laughs> staring at that screen. And I will be back at it again tomorrow. Please do comment down below. Let me know what you think of George R. R. Martin's routine. Again, let me know what you think of the whole gardener versus architects thing. Let me know if there are any other things that you think tend to divide the writing community. And also let me know if there's any kind of routine changes that you are trying to make. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all very soon with another video. Bye! Where is this app? But I want to bring this up because where am I going with this? Kind of, what am I trying to say? As well as, we'll do that later in this video. What are words?